It may seem that so much has already been said about video editing, but still, there are a few more mistakes that YouTubers do in their videos, from which I sometimes do not sleep at night. I also made these mistakes, we all go through this, but nevertheless, I want you not to make them anymore. My name is Arthur Weiner, this is the Mobavi Vlog, and let's go! When I started doing YouTube, I thought that everything works here like in traditional media. I can go to some film school, I can take some courses, take this knowledge and apply it on YouTube. Although, in fact, everything turned out to be different, and what is considered correct in traditional media simply does not work here. Of course, there are some intersections with traditional media, but let's take a look at some mistakes that relate primarily to YouTubers. So, they won't tell you this in film schools. You all know, and I also told you about it, that in editing, you need to cut out extra pauses when someone tells something to the camera. You know this very well, but the editors on YouTube who cut out these extra pauses can thereby make two mistakes. And the first mistake is the micro pauses. It seems like they cut out the pause, but the micro pause still remained. A small pause at the end of a sentence and a small pause at the beginning of the next sentence. The result is such a strange, awkward transition. In fact, the pace of a video is very important. If your viewer is watching videos at a speed of 1.5x or 2x, this is bad, you lose audience retention. In this case, you need to speak faster if it's you, or as the person who speaks to do it faster, or add it faster, or better both. The retention of your videos directly depends on the pace of your video. The second mistake is too rough cuts. As a result, we get that at the end of the first audio and the beginning of the second stick roughly together and you can hear the click, which also annoys the viewer. To avoid these two mistakes, you need to make a kind of combination of L-cut and J-cut. That is, when the audio of the second shot goes under the video of the first and the audio of the first shot goes under the video of the second shot. But this is not L-cut and J-cut in the usual sense, when audio and video really intersect. This is done so that the audio of the first and second shots intersect slightly and as a result, we get a smooth transition from one audio to another. You can also make the first audio fade in smoothly and the second fade out smoothly. As a result, we get firstly a smooth transition and secondly a fast transition, that is, you increase the tempo, the pace of your edit, without sacrificing the quality. In fact, we made a fast but smooth jump cut. Sometimes it's useful to make zoom ins and outs while you're cutting. I think you know that very well too. When you make these zoom ins, you can make another mistake. The speaker's eyes should remain at the same level. That is, if you just randomly stretch the image, the eyes may shift and this also distracts the viewer a little. Therefore, to prevent this from happening, remember where the speaker's eyes are and by stretching the image, keep their original position so that if they were in the center, they stay in the center. If they are on the left side, keep them on the left side. Thus, you will make a consistent, non-irritating sequence of jump cuts. Our team believes that any beginner can create eye-catching and engaging content quickly without having to waste much of their time on learning. And this is where Movavi Unlimited, which is, by the way, available on the Movavi Secret Sale, may come in handy. Movavi Unlimited is the unique annual plan that includes the best from Movavi in one intuitive platform. There are tools for video editing, like Movavi Video Editor Plus itself, photo retouching, screen recording apps, and a set of utilities for work and study. On top of this, Movavi Unlimited gives you the one-year access to all the effects that the Movavi Effects Store has to offer. You won't lose much time on learning. Every step of the creation process, from converting raw footage to adding effects to your video project, might be done in just a few clicks. Movavi Unlimited will help you create high-quality content and make your ideas come true. Unlike professional software, Movavi Unlimited is accessible for many users. Its annual subscription plan includes 10 programs and a huge collection of effects at the price of just one app. And the best thing is that that you won't need a top-of-the-line computer to make the platform run smoothly. The one-year subscription to Movavi Unlimited is now available at 85% off on the exclusive Movavi sale. Hit the link below to use this or any other special offer from our secret page. But even if you have a fast and dynamic editing, the video can still get very slow and boring. Guess how? With the help of meaningless 
B-roll. This means that if you find some cool as it seems to you B-roll, some cool shot from a drone, in fact it's not in your video, in your context. Every shot that you add should have a reason to exist in your video. If you throw a shot and you can't answer the question why it's here, what it complements, then you don't need this shot, cut it out. Adding B-roll just for the sake of adding B-roll just makes your video more boring. And this applies not only to B-roll, but also to A-roll, your main storyline. For example, the host tells something in one location, completes his thought, and we jump into the next shot. What is being told in the second shot should make sense, there should be a reason why you add it. If you know that there will be no change in the video if you cut this shot out, then you need to cut it out. But if you know that there's no way without it at all, then you did everything right. That is, disclose the information, do not repeat it. If you add more shots, it's not just to add and make it kinda more dynamic, but you do it with meaning and with a specific reason. Another major mistake of aspiring YouTubers is the desire to please YouTube algorithms. When they tell you that you need to start a video in a certain way, end it in a certain way, say something at some point in the video, you start to adjust to it. The biggest trap you can fall into is the desire to make a video for at least eight minutes, because you can put in more ads there. How does it work in the end? There is this, I need to make my videos longer in your head. And striving for this goal, you lose something in the moment. That is, you start stretching the video somewhere, adding more unnecessary B-roll, you get a boring video that people wind up, and how do you earn more this way? You will have worse audience retention and your video will be less recommended. Remember that you first of all need not to please the algorithm, but to make a good interest in video. If, for example, your video turned out to be 7.5 minutes, well, or even 6 minutes, but it turned out to be cool, dynamic, interesting to watch, everything is in its place, then it will be better for the algorithm and you will get more from it. YouTube loves engagement, and if you have a short video and the retention percentage is higher, not the watch time, then this is better for the algorithm and your video will go further. So so make good content, not content for algorithms. Another mistake is editing the most interesting in the first place. Video editing itself is a rather time-consuming process and you should take a very responsible approach to how you allocate time in this process. And let's say you have five hours to finish your video and you spend three hours finding some interesting moment in your video, it inspires you, you found the music, you applied the effect and you spent three hours on it and you have two hours left on the video, you just don't have time for it. This is a trap, and in this regard, you need to train yourself a little. To do the most difficult, the most important thing in the first place, the most interesting thing is the easiest. You will do it quickly, it won't take you long. Maybe I'll say the obvious thing now, but when you're looking for music for your video, you found some track and you're like, well, it's kinda cool, it's fine. If this is the way you're looking for music for your video, most likely you find the wrong track. You know, we've talked about it many times. Music is important. Look for it, because it finishes the video, supports emotion. But still, I come across videos where the tempo of the music does not match the tempo of the video. Not to mention the emotion there. Music is a very important element, pay a little more time and attention to it, because it emphasizes emotion, it really holds the viewer's attention, which directly affects the retention of your videos. Listen to the tempo of the video, at what speed the person speaks, what is the overall tempo, what is the emotion, it should all coincide, the music should emphasize and complement it. If you do this, audience retention will get better. Another beginner's mistake is the desire to create something very new and unique, the desire to stand out. And it may sound strange because the desire to create something new is normal, right? Yes, it is, but it should be done with the understanding of one very important thought. Today we're faced with the problem of oversaturation, when it would seem something new comes out, in fact it's more or less recycled old. There is nothing completely new and will not be, so the question is, where to look for ideas for my videos, where to look for ideas for my editing, for my style? The answer is actually very simple. Copy it. When you watch a video of your favorite creator, you watch your favorite movie or some photo that you really like, the experience you get when you watch this video, the emotions that you experience, they are unique 
and they are yours. If you take and just copy what you have seen, in any case, what you will do yourself will be the result of the accumulated experience that you have gained by watching not only this work, but also many others. As a result, you will get a unique product, new video, your video. It is clear that I'm not talking about a complete copy, a ripoff of someone else's work, but when you get inspired, do something of your own. Let it be very similar, but it will be yours. But there are already a lot of examples in history when something new, brilliant appeared, people liked it, but in fact it was a remake of something old. Copy like an artist. Don't be afraid, be inspired. And for additional motivation, you can watch these videos and you can also like this video if it was helpful and see you in the next one.